let me say this. It is okay to disagree with me. I have no problem with anyone disagreeing with me. The problem becomes when you get disrespectful. That is an issue. I know that there are very hypersensitive people out there. For instance, if John tells Bill that grass is blue and Bill says, no, grass is green. So John gets really angry at Bill and begins to call him stupid and idiot or use sarcasm and all of this other stuff. That is not necessary at all. I know that back in your past, you may have been abused when you were a child. You may have been traumatized. So now you may have this hatred and bitterness and all of this other stuff that God tells you to release or to get rid of, but you just want to hold it in and not get rid of it. If you die in that way, you have to know that you won't be able to get into heaven. So you have to know that. So your issue is not with me and with what I am saying. Your issue is from the past, which you need to get rid of. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verses 39 through 42. And if you hate God... It really makes no sense. You know what God is going to do to you when you disobey him. So why would you continue to do something knowing that you are going to get punished severely? Well, Kevin, I just don't care. Okay, light yourself on fire right now since you don't care which you are not going to do. Why? Because it is not worth it. It is going to be too painful. Okay, why are you hating God? Why are you rebelling against God? Makes no sense. If you won't light yourself on fire, when you go to hell, what do you believe is going to happen to you? You are going to be on fire and tortured. So, it is really foolish. Let's go to Matthew 5, verses 39 through 42. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, Turn to him the other also. What is this saying? This is telling you to not resist evil. This is not saying to do evil, but this is saying to resist evil. To not resist evil. An evil person, if they are trying to use you, take advantage of you, harm you as this is saying to hit you or something this is saying to not resist I believe it is in Romans chapter 16 I believe I don't have my phone on me but it was saying that 
let me paraphrase what it is saying. It is saying that to do good to your enemies. If your enemies still choose to do you wrong, God is going to avenge you. Avenge you. When you live for God, you don't have to worry about fighting a person back. When you live for God, you don't have to worry about getting even with a person. When you live, when you live for God, when someone does you wrong, you don't have to constantly fret or contemplate upon what happened to you because God is going to fix it. And I am a witness to that because God has there are times where I saw my enemies punished because of what they have done to me and perhaps what they have been doing to other people as well. But I saw it. I saw it more than one time. I am a witness to that. And when I saw it, when my enemy needed my help, guess what? I helped that person out because I knew if I did not help that person out that I would get punished as well. This is not a game. This is saying if someone hits you or want to take advantage of you, this is saying to not resist it. I know that there are some Christian people, Christian people who like to fight. I was at this church or I went to this church and I was hearing this person teaching and they were speaking about the issue of fighting and I am listening and I am like what how can you teach that teaching that you would fight back and stuff like that that is wrong Some people say that they are willing to die for God. Hey, Kevin, I am willing to die for God. You know, it is whatever. If God needs me, I am there for him. But when it comes down to basic things like this, you are not willing to follow it. So if you are not willing to follow this basic stuff here, how are you going to be willing to die for Jesus Christ? You are lying. It is one thing if you are following God's word and say, hey, Kevin, I am willing to die for Christ. Okay, but you can't do the basics of what the Bible is telling you to do. But yes, so you can't live for Christ so you think you can die for Christ. How can you be a carnal person believing that you going to do something that is much more than what you are saying that you will be able to do when you can't do the basics? I am there for Jesus Christ at any time but you can't do something basic like this. You are just a liar. Well, Kevin, I disagree with you. Whatever. Verse 40. And if any man will sue thee, let me go back to 39. Let me give more proof for 39. Let's go to 2 Timothy. So hold your finger in Matthew. And let's go to 2 Timothy 
chapter 3, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, meaning following his rules and regulations, shall suffer persecution. So bad things are going to happen to you because you are living for Jesus Christ, for God. So when you are resisting what God is allowing, God is going to test us. God is going to allow us to be persecuted because it is going to bring, when we get tested by God, I don't have the scripture on me, but it is going to build patience within us. It is going to build, if you stay with God, the more that you are tried or tried, it is going to build more, how can I say this? Personality traits of God within yourself. We are supposed to become more and more like Jesus Christ each and every day. To get us to change, to get our faith to build, listen, if I let good things happen to you all day long, how can your faith increase? Tell me that. If no bad thing happens to you, how can your faith increase? What if I want you somewhere that you are not at yet? I have to allow some things to happen to you to push you to the next level. When you are fighting against that, you are trying to work against God. I am not saying to not pray. I am not saying to not fast and read your Bible. What I am saying, when God allows trouble your way, you are willing to revert back into sin to try to fix a problem that God has allowed, but you are trying to fix it in your own carnal, foolish way when God is testing you. There was this one person I would talk to almost every night and for hours. And I would try to teach this person I tried so hard, like I put in a lot of effort into it. And it seemed like this person was getting a hang to it, I guess. And then when God allowed some things to happen to this person, this person just went right back to the way that he always been. That made me so mad, man, all the time. I invested probably over 20 hours or more in this person, man. More than that. Way more than that. Maybe, I don't know, but at least 20 hours or more in this person just to see this person. I know that we are to plant seeds, but And I was telling this person that you are going to be tested. And I was showing this person scriptures and all this stuff here. And to see this person go back to the old way of doing things, that, that right there really hurt right there. It really, really hurt. Whatever. 40. Bad things, God is going to try you. The higher level you get with God, God is going to allow 
more things into your life. And you will be surprised about how many people either fight against that or they go to church and don't understand that. And I am not saying that I understand everything, but this is the basic things of God here. What I am teaching you is pretty much the basic things of God. I don't have to get really deep because most or many people are not doing the basics. There are people who teach really deep and stuff and that is good, but the basics have to be taught. Most people are worried about when the, the world is going to end and all this other stuff. Why are you concerned about that when you are not even saved? Why are you so concerned about about the Antichrist and about this and this and that when you not you are not obeying the basic things of the Bible. You are concerned about the wrong things. How about you get your life straight, then think about the Antichrist and when the world is going to end. I don't I am not concerned about the end of this world. I am not concerned about pointless stuff like that. I am concerned about being right with God each and every day. So if something does happen, I know that I am going to heaven. Your mind is off of righteousness and you are concerned about things that you are not even ready for. You are researching 40. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. So what is that saying there? Let me see what this verse here is saying. I forget. Okay. So what this is saying, give people more than what they expect. Even if they are using you. I know that all of us don't like being used. I hate being used. But I know that I am going to reap what I sow and my enemy is going to reap what they have sown as well. So even I need to be more strong in this area myself. I will give to a point but once I hit that point, I kind of bag off. And I need to get to the point where I am willing to give everything. And you may say, well, how are you going to pay your rent? How are you going to have gas in your car? How are you going to pay for this and that? We need to get to the point where we are fully trusting in God more than our own ability to do things. We need to get to that point. When you are believing in yourself more than God, or if you are just a carnal, earthly minded, spiritually dead person, you are not going to do what is right you are going to worry about yourself than what God is telling you to do. You want to get blessed by God, but you are not willing to do what it takes to get blessed. There are different ways, according to what the Bible is telling us, to get blessed by God.
and you want to get blessed, but you are not willing to do what it takes. Because if you get down to it, you are mostly, yes, you may do some things for people, blah, 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 blah. But really, you are a, a selfish, self-centered person. Ouch, bit my tongue. Uh, you are a selfish person. If you get down to it, <sighs> okay. So get used to being used. I get used and sometimes I get frustrated, but I have to remind myself what the Bible is saying. And sometimes Sometimes when I get used, see, my problem is sometimes I think way too much. I need to get to the point where I just act and not think. Like, I know that I have to help this person, so let me stop thinking and just act. Like, turn off <laughs> my thinking process per se, I guess you can say, and just do what I have to do. And not say, well, this person can do this on their own or this is pointless and all this stuff here. You need to get to the point where you turn your mind off toward things that you know that you should do and just do that act of kindness for that person. I am not saying to do sinful things for people. Keep things in context now. 41. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twine. So give a person more than what they were asking for. Do more good things for them, whether they de deserve it or not even if they don't deserve what you are doing for them or giving to them, do it anyways. Do more. Myself. I am doing this more and more and more and for more people. I do things for people even if they are not going to give me anything. I don't care. Why? Because it is the law of reaping and sowing. You don't have to do anything for me. For instance, the way that I was before, in some cases, like, look, if you are not going to do anything for me, hey, I am not going to do anything for you. And the way I was too, I would do something for you because maybe a year later, so on and so on, I may need you to do something for me, so I am doing something for you now to get you to do something for me later. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is evil. When you do things for people, you don't have any strings attached unless it is agreed upon Hey, if I do this for you, I want you to help me later. Unless that is agreed upon, that is one thing. But if no agreement have been made for that to happen, you can't place or have any strings attached to anything that you do for people. That is evil. When I do things for people, I don't care if you do anything for me back, I don't care. Because I know that if I give out kindness, kindness is going to have to come back to me. I know if I do evil and be deceptive, I know that is going to have to come back to me as well. <sighs> Stop expecting people to do for you when you are doing for them. If you want 
God to have favor upon you. If you want God to smile upon you, do what he is telling you to do. Act in love. I don't care how many times you backstab me. If you come to me for help, I am going to help you whether I like it or not. I am going to force myself to do for you even if everything within me is saying no. For instance, it was this one person that really got me angry. And not only one time, but this person kept on doing things. I don't think he really cared, but he kept on doing things to hurt me. And finally, this person got punished. And when I found out, my first reaction was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but after a day or two, I felt really bad about that. Like I should not be happy about this person going through pain and sorrow and stuff like that. So I had to repent afterward. And now I contact this person and try to teach this person about God and stuff like that. And at first, I did not want to write this person. Like, everything within me was like, just leave this person alone, whatever. And it was so hard to contact this person or to have a, a conversation with this person, per se. But the more I pushed myself, the more that I wrote this person, the more that I was doing for this person, it got easier and easier and easier. What am I trying to say? It is not about what people are doing for you or doing against you or what they, the wrong that they are doing toward you. It is about what you are doing to other people. Yes, it hurts. Do you know when when you get so angry, you get to the point where like tears come out? It's not like you are sad, but you are so mad and you don't want to do anything dumb, you know. <laughs> and you get so mad and you know that this person is going to do another bad thing to you. And you get so mad that tears just fall down. That's how I was. Like I was crying and I was so mad. And I could tell that either the Holy Spirit or something was trying to calm me down, but I was like, no, this person is going to do it again, you know? So I was making myself more mad. And after like six or eight hours, you know, some things were going into my mind and I was like, hey, let me stop this. And that is when I repented and, you know, was praying about it and stuff like that. This is what we have to go through. We have to do right by people even when it hurts. We have to push ourselves to love even when it is difficult to love. Where am I? 41, I believe. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twine. So this confirms what 40 is saying. It is pretty much saying the same things. Give people more than what they expect of you, even when you know that they are using you. And like I said, I hate, I don't like to give money to people if I figure they are going to buy alcohol or weed or drugs with the money. 
Don't ask me for money if you do that. But when we when we get down to 42, you are going to understand what I am saying. 42. Give to him that acts of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. This is saying, if someone asks us for something, give it to them. Of course, you can't give what you don't have. Let me say this. I believe, and I know that this may happen to me. Let me say this, because I don't want to be a hypocrite or anything like that. Give to people. If someone wants something, at least give them something. Like if they come to you and ask for $2,000, whether you have it or not, I don't think it is a sin to not give a person $2,000 when they ask for it. Even if they ask for that much money, if you give them like 50 or 100, I believe that is good too. I believe if you were to give that person $2,000, I believe that you will reap what you have sown. So more good is going to come to you. I remember this one time. You see, I have a ministry where I give people Bibles for free and the Passion of the Christ and documents I have written about God and stuff like that. So there is a certain amount that I spend on the ministry every month. Sometimes I overspend for two or three months, whatever, but usually a certain amount every month. And it was a couple of people that kept on asking for money, kept on asking for money. And I was thinking, if I continue to give these people money, I won't have money to do what is good for people, you know, sending them Bibles and the Passion of the Christ and stuff like that. I won't have money for that. But I kept on giving and giving and giving. Let me say this. When stuff like that happens, you have to know that you are being tested. You are being tested. When people come to you over and over and over again, see that as a test because that is a test. Because that is not going to always happen. That person or those two people continued to come to me but after a, a particular time period, they stopped coming to me. I don't know what happened to them, but they stopped asking. So let's go back to verse 39. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the also. Turn to him the other also. So this is saying to not fight. Let's go to, and you may say, Kevin, you know, if someone hits me, I am going to hit them back because I am no punk and no one is going to touch me, blah, blah, blah. And like I said before, if I have said it, this is the reason why you are lukewarm. This is the reason why your relationship with God is going nowhere because you are choosing to disobey him purposely, consistently, not on accident. Let's go to Matthew 26, 47 through 52. I was only going to do verse 
52, but I want to keep things in context. And I really don't want to do a really long one on this, but hey. Matthew 26, 47 through 52. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. So what is going on here? This is around the time where they are going to take Jesus Christ and tell lies on him and later crucify him. So this is speaking about when Judas betrayed Jesus and he is bringing a gang of people to take Jesus and try him and beat him and stuff like that. 48. Now he that betrayed him, Judas, gave them a sign saying, Who, whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he hold him fast. So whoever I kiss, I want you to take them or take him. 49. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail Master, and kissed him. So he, so he kissed Jesus, telling or showing those people, hey, I want you to take him. This is Jesus Christ right here. 50. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Or where are you coming from? I believe that is what it is saying. Or do what you came to do. Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. So Judas showed who Jesus is or was, and they took him. 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. So one of the 12 disciples, I believe it was Peter, cut a person's ear off. Now keep in mind, we are still talking about verse 39 here, about fighting, right? Okay, so Peter was like, no, nah. swack, cut a person's ear off. Okay, 52. Then Jesus said, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto him, put up again thy sword into his place. Stop fighting. Put up your sword. And drew his sword. Wait a minute. Then Jesus said, I'm right here. I was reading in 51. <laughs> then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all, pay attention, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. What does that sound like? Let's make it blue. <laughs> for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. What does that sound like? You are going to reap what you sow. <laughs> but I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. This is telling you to not fight back because if you fight back, more bad things are going to happen to you. This is telling you, <laughs> if you kill people, you are going to be killed likewise. 
Whatever you do to people is going to happen to you as well. So when you act kindly towards a person that slaps you in, mm, 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 that slaps you and you continue to do well to them, God is going to bless you. Why? Because you are acting kindly toward that person no matter what they are doing to you. The law of reaping and sowing is always in effect. You can't go around this. Well, what if they break into my home? You don't fight back. Well, what if they steal my TV and my car? You don't fight back. Because God is going to avenge you. Well, I'm going to fight back. Whatever, Kevin. <laughs> Listen, man, you can do whatever you want to do. You have been doing whatever you want to do, and that has not been working for you, have it? No, you have been doing what you want to do, and that has not been working for you, but yet you are telling me that you are going to do what you want to do, knowing that it is not going to work for you. How foolish is that? Kevin, I don't know why these bad things are happening to me. You know, I try to be nice to people and, and I, you know, I try to pay my taxes and stuff and bad things happen to me. I pray that this makes sense. Jesus is telling you how to live. If God made the world, and he made the laws of this world, and he is telling you how to live in a world that he made, why not pay attention to what he is saying? Earthly knowledge means nothing. What other humans are teaching you means nothing if it's not based upon the Bible. Earthly knowledge tells you if someone tries to kill you, you have to kill them first. If someone tries to harm you, you have to harm them first or back. That is earthly carnal knowledge, which is going to lead to death. You want to get blessed by God. You want the favor of God. You want more grace from God, but you are working based upon carnal, earthly knowledge, which can only lead to death. Going by the rules and regulations of God is going to lead to life. Why have I changed? Why am I different from people who choose to sin because I follow it is not that I am this great guy it is not that I am smart and wise and blah 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 no I choose to follow the Bible I tell people I am just an average everyday guy maybe below average maybe below 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 average times three I just follow the Bible more more and more if I can do it, a person that is below average times three, if you are average or higher, you can easily do more than I. Easily. Since I am below average times three. I pray that this makes sense. Let me stop it here. I pray that you understand everything I have spoke about when you follow God's rules I am telling you the quality of life you are going to receive is better even if demons try to mess with you and all that dumb stuff like that your quality of life is going to be much better you you are going to find out what peace really is God bless